Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. What effects do you think the January 6th committee has had on on the outcome of the midterm election? I think they have exposed the hypocrisy of the GOP and they have... Well, that's endless. Yeah, and they've brought to light the real threat to democracy. Republicans. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm done. <laughs> no, that that we've had. I think they have made an impact. Whether you know the GOP, you know the the moderate centrist GOP, the old school GOP, wants to admit they have made an impact. And they, the January six hearings have done so much more than we've ever expected. Like, I didn't even know that I would have been impacted as much. Like, going through and listening to the testimony and watching it, Rusty Bowers and, you know, Cassidy Hutchinson. Like, I was floored. The things with the the Secret Service. This This is a turning point in our democracy. Like, this is our do or die moment. We met the moment. I don't, this, no, this boy's over here. He's like, I know he's doing stuff. We was just going to ignore him and pretend like he don't exist. But (laughs) he's like, do or die? Carol. I was, all right. I'm sorry. I'm done. I was trying to help you. I was going to let you. Like, okay. I I was trying to set you up to just not pay him any attention. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. He gonna get a whooping. He gonna bring what out the switch. With a switch. All right, no, don't abuse your children. We're just kidding out there, people. We we're not actually gonna physically accost him with 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 any objects. We went off on another tangent here. Apart from the impact of the one six committee on on the midterm elections. Well, let's let's consider what may or may not happen to the January 6th committee. Should Republicans take the House? Like, where does the 1-6 committee go from here? Uh, Obviously, if you don't know, they have uh, subpoenaed the former president, F. POTUS, as we like to refer to him as. He's obviously not going to comply. He's filed a lawsuit in Florida, which is insane because the committee is in Washington, D.C., and they're asking him to testify in Washington, D.C. It's probably a great example of forum shopping here. But, yeah, the, I assume the plan there is to run out the clock, hoping that Republicans take control of the House and then the committee is disbanded. I mean, probably. But now we'll have a new calculus. Do you think if there's such a narrow majority that all of them are going to there's writing on the wall now, right? About the future of the party. How quickly are all of them going to say, like, I still want in on this? Like, okay, don't you think a... there's a chance they might not vote for that? It could behoove them to have the the kind of accountability that would restore something, something of their own like morality or dig- I guess I don't know. Maybe well, they're just sailed long ago. Here's the scenario. Yes. Republicans win the house. It's 218, 218 seats filled by Republicans, 217 seats filled by Democrats. 
What are the chances Democrats pick off two or three Republicans and vote to reestablish the one six committee? Is it possible? I don't I, I don't know if that's feasible or not. There may be a handful of sane GOPers out there. Uh, I couldn't give you a list, <laughs> but it's possible that they exist. Even if they weren't sane last week, they may suddenly be quote become sane because again they might read the fucking writing on the wall and see that like their brand is dying right they they might see this as an opportunity to get back on track uh that's that's one possible scenario um another possible scenario is uh given that we may or may not be in line to win the 51st seat in the senate uh is it possible that the Senate could establish their own January 6th committee and pick up where the House left off? Oh, that's a good idea, huh? You think about that one? <laughs> hey, y'all are just looking into the screen like, oh, shit. No, I mean, it, it does sound like a good idea. I'm just not as familiar with the, these these legal processes for, you know. Are you drinking hooch, Carol? This is water. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just uh, what you want to see. Uh, I'm yeah. from the south. I see a mason bar with white, uh, and like it's white liquor. You're. <laughs> I also have some seltzer. That's why we're like, so close. It's just water. She's not an alcoholic like us. <laughs> um, and I had a glass alcoholic. of wine it's just before. Water. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, maybe you are an alcoholic just like us. No, I would imagine uh, that the Senate would have to. All right. So the lame duck period for the House would be between, you know, whenever they call the final vote and, you know, next January when the new Congress is sworn in, they would have to have the Senate establish their own committee to investigate um, the one six attack on the Capitol. And then the current House committee would have to transfer uh, all their investigative materials to the Senate committee. I mean, I, I can't imagine the process is too complicated, but it's it's a feasible possibility. Does it really need to be concurrent? Like, do they need to transfer all that stuff before the new I think they Congress would have to starts. Make... Can the new Congress be like destroy all of the evidence and it cannot be retrieved? And they'd be like, <laughs> "Well, I think." Information Act, and they'd be like, "No, we got rid of that with our slim congressional majority." <laughs> <laughs> I think they would have to vote to send the information to the Senate. They they can't just have the Senate demand the information. I don't I don't think that's the way that that would work. Uh, <laughs> But look, it look, there's all types of scenarios for lame duck actions by Congress that they could take to do any a number of things. And this is certainly one of them. Um, should Dems lose the House? I mean, it's it's my preferred strategy. Like, to be honest, this wasn't a thorough enough investigation. Like, yeah, it's been effective, but like they didn't get to the bottom of everything. Uh, yeah, they found a significant amount of information that implicates Trump to a huge degree. But there are a number of other people involved that we know nothing about. Like, we haven't heard anything about the Pentagon. I mean, we know there's been some shenanigans at Secret Service. We haven't gotten any real answers about that, um, about what the Capitol Police leadership were doing on on one six to help stop this. We don't, we don't know anything about that. I mean, there were a number of law enforcement failures that they haven't gotten to. Roger Stone. We don't know what was going on in the DC war rooms on on one five and one six. Like there's there's so much information we don't know that they haven't gotten to the bottom two that I can't imagine that even if they spent another two years investigating that they would they would get to the bottom of everything. So I I think it's yeah. fairly important that they find a way to extend this investigation as as long as not necessarily as long as possible, but as long as they need to. Well, yeah, but at what point can they hand it over to the Justice Department or refer these cases over? I mean, how much more how much more information do you think they need that they don't already have and haven't already handed over? Like that maybe just the part of it that's like a ceremony is taking a pause and not like do you think they're not doing anything right now? 
Or they haven't been, even though with they're the not committee. Having... So yeah. I don't know if the committee is doing any any more investigative work at this point. Uh, they're supposedly in the process of writing out their final report, which they'll release soon, sometime in the next month or so before they ha- have to close up shop. I mean, again, like if Democrats win the House, they can just reinstate the committee upon the... Yeah, but what if it's already with the Justice Department by then? <laughs> like what can, i'm talking about like real trials how how well, long do we need to okay so that's, oh, that's true have... like even if they no, that's that's a good point carol like even if they do um dismantle if the gop gets the house yeah that doesn't affect the, the department of justice at all yeah the or doj the has the job. they have buku evidence you know so even if they dismantle it, it doesn't stop the the federal investigation. Yeah. So let's say Republicans win the House. They know the committee will be disbanded in January. They'll just turn over all their evidence to DOJ. It's not really that, that complicated of an issue. I mean, it's not ideal, again, like, so the Department of Justice and Congress have two different goals. Like, the Department of Justice investigation is to investigate crimes. And Congress's goal is to figure out what happened and how to prevent it from happening in the future and and possibly changing any laws to address the situation so that it's less likely to happen again. Like, you know, it's seemingly intertwined, intertwined goals there, but not not necessarily overlapping. But, yeah, I, it, there is a way that Republicans taking control of the House could have an effect on DOJ, but it's mostly by Republicans taking control of the investigative committees in the House and using them to harass the Justice Department. But, I mean, there's multiple workarounds to deal with that. Like, it it wouldn't be ideal, but, like, it's not an impossible scenario to navigate. Also, one thing... (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm so (laughs) long-winded. I won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, all right. So there's one scenario uh, Republicans have to worry about, even if they do win the House, and and it's this. It's it's what if the margin is so small, if it's one or two seats that like, oh, I don't know, say a couple of GOP members of Congress have to resign because, I don't know, they got indicted. Because they're... <laughs> There are multiple investigations where where GOP members of Congress are um, implicated in in criminal activity in a number of schemes. Like so, like as far as separate separate plots go, there's the fake elector scheme, but that that spanned multiple states and multiple congressmen. Didn't Scott Perry have his phone seized by the feds? Yes. <laughs> Uh yeah, you know, there's uh Matt Gates and the kids and the Venmo payments and in the um unfortunate activities that he may have engaged in with minors. Uh, there's that. There's there's Georgia. That district attorney is on on her own own shit. She's not like she doesn't re- rather report to DOJ. Like so she could be on her own timeline. Like there's a number of GOP congressmen implicated in the in the basically voter fraud plot by Trump to get them to cheat to change the totals. I mean, the list goes on and on. So if their majority is is slim, like I mean, all it takes is a couple of indictments to move players off the chessboard, and the next thing you know, <laughs> there's some special elections. And Republicans could just as easily lose the House as, as they gained it. Anything's possible. I'm not saying I, that's what I expect to happen. I'm just saying it's a it's a possibility. And, and the probability is high. Yeah. And when you do a lot of fucking around, the chances are you will find out. Very true, Carol. Very true. Has wise words from someone who's definitely been paying attention this whole time. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got two fun games left for us to play. Let's let's say Republicans do win the House. Who becomes the speaker? 
Oh, <laughs> oh, you didn't think about that, did you? <laughs> That's a fun game. Will it be oh, Kevin McCarthy shit. or will it be? Uh, I mean, okay. Here's the thing. Um, we've already got Matt Gates out here. You know, again, as as we previously mentioned, um, the pedo. Um, the guy who had a you know fifteen year old son living with him, whose dad was still alive. That was some weird shit. Where's um, Nestor? <laughs> is Nestor still alive? Uh, Nestor didn't kill himself. Hashtag he aged out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey. So you know. Uh, all right. The, off topic. Slightly off topic. The the Jelaine Maxwell trial. Um, where one of the witnesses was talking about how, like, oh, she was a favorite of Epstein when she was, like, 15 or so. And then, you know, he had, had her fun. And, like, on her 18th birthday, she was like, oh, I want to go party and have fun. And and he was like, oh, so do you have any younger friends? And apparently he had lost interest because she was too old. Um, Ew. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. Well, I, look, that was... <laughs> There were a lot of horrifying things in that trial that I actually don't want to think about ever again because it was that bad. But that was one that stuck out to me. It was like, oh, it was that bad. It was like, oh, they got they get too old for him. That's that's even creepier than all this other shit. It's like, oh, now that she's 18, she's legal. Like, <laughs> she's lost all appeal. It's it's so gross. Anyway, that would be Nestor. He he aged out of Matt Gates. Uh, fancy, I, guess, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, but no, Gates is out here like, oh no, nah, bitch, we ain't going for no Kevin McCarthy, nah, nah, son. Um, so, uh, trouble in paradise. <laughs> well, you got what do they uh, do? <laughs> Marge, you got Marge saying she's ready for a civil war within the party. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> I have a sort of thread that I'll be releasing after this. Well, it'll be before you hear this podcast out there, listeners, on that very that very topic. The MAGA, MAGA Civil War. I guess MAGA Civil War Part 1 was the capital where they were about to hang Mike Pence. This is this is the sequel. It's uh, MAGA Forever. I, I don't know. Well, anyway. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right. Again, slim majority, 218 seats. They have enough for enough seats for no defections. Um, what happens if the maggots can't side with the, I mean, I don't want to call them normal um, members. A slightly of- less maggot. <laughs> maggot light. Oh, oh man. Um, okay. Light. We'll Mag call them. Light. The MAGAs versus the pre-MAGA Republicans. Um, what if they can't agree to vote for one specific person to be the House Speaker and Democrats say, I don't know, propose someone from outside of Congress who's, I guess, what we would call in this day and age a normal conservative and, and Democrats all agree to. Um, oh, we're not getting Liz Cheney. No, I see where I you're going with this. I wasn't saying specifically Liz Cheney. It could be anyone. Like there are a number of respected conservative legal minds out there, or former judges, or or even former House members that that may or may not, um, you know, be a fitting replacement for the Speaker of the House. And, and Dems unite their votes behind that person. They they only need possibly a handful of defections from the Republican Party. And you can end up with a not insane person being Speaker of the House. I mean, that would be a scenario. True. Or, I mean, I guess it's entirely possible that Democrats all vote for Nancy Pelosi again and the Republicans split their vote. And the next thing you know, we got Speaker... <laughs> We got Speaker Nancy Pelosi with a Republican majority in the House. That'd be fucking insane. Um, fingers crossed anything could happen. That was a fun game. All right. Final, final <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's turned into a game show. Um, f- all right. Last game of the evening. All right. Let me try that again. There was like a train going off in the background. Last game of the evening. Last game of the evening. I'm sorry, I'm done. Uh, I, look, it's been a long day. 
It's only Monday. Why is this week so long already? All right, last game of the evening. When Trump announces, who will his running mate be? That three-toed bitch. Oh man, yeah, that's that's your that's your your take, Carol. Who might you suggest Trump chooses his running mate? Look, this doesn't I'm have to be right to answers of, only. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like who is meek and pathetic enough as a as a, to be like next to him by his side. But a, a oh, well, in that sense. case, Mike Pence, he meek and pathetic. Mike, Mike again? Yeah, I mean, like he already tried to kill him once, and then like he crawled back like, to him. He's not going to have anyone he considers what? a threat to him. Uh, no, this Marge, is totally fair. Maybe right. he would have Marge because he's too stupid to see a woman as a threat. Well, hey, um, let's go. Well, let's go. Let's stick with that idea for a second, right? Like Marco Rubio. Okay. He would that's never not- do that. He would never do that because Marco would kill him in his sleep to become president. So that's definitely not it. But no, back to like what you identified. Marco doesn't have the balls to like yeah. stab through the clavicle. No, so, he would, no, he Marco is a bitch. He would poison his hamburger. Um, <laughs> he'd poison. He'd put um, what is it? Rat poison in his ketchup. Um, no, the idea that Trump is much of a sociopath as he is is also. Uh, paranoid so you're absolutely right that he wouldn't choose anyone to be his running mate that he thought was a threat to him so it's so obviously DeSantis is out (laughs) DeSantis is not an option because DeSantis is on his own I want to be president train and like yeah no Trump ain't going for that (laughs) um but yes also I do you think he sees Marjorie Taylor Greene as a threat as, as, as far as like stealing his base away from him? I, I don't think that's a Probably possibility. Probably not. I, I no. think she is. She seems very loyal to him. Yeah. Well, she's also. Yeah, she is very. I right, look, you, you know, sometimes I feel uncomfortable denigrating a woman's Look, there's enough misogyny in the world, and I do occasionally feel I feel uncomfortable denigrating a woman's look sometimes, and that's not where I'm going with this. But also uncomfortable denigrating uh, women's mental capabilities, as you know, not in like the Herschel Walker realm of like. Anyway, just Marjorie doesn't seem like the brightest bulb in in the box, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I don't necessarily think. When Trump looks at competition, he's looking at Marge like, oh, she's clever and shifty enough to weasel her way in the, like, taking the MAGA base and running with it, right? Like, she's good for clicks on Twitter and shit, but, like, she's not not dangerous in, in terms of, like, her savviness. Right? She's no Glenn Youngkin, is what I'm saying. Young. Yonkin? That sounds Chinese. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> Did you eat dinner? What happened there? What are we doing? That ain't going in the podcast. <laughs> I would definitely edit that out. <laughs> You're not getting... Hey, look. <laughs> Chappelle can get away with saying some crazy shit. We can't. Like, we can't even toe the line. We can't even get that close. And he can't really do it either. I mean, he got, got like on half t- of the studio audience on SNL like, uh, 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 I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So yunking, not, not an option. <laughs> yunking, not Chinese. <laughs> not Chinese. Man, Sorry. you know, I do. Man, oh, what, so what are those buns called? Um, those uh, like. The, the bun. buns? Yeah, those are dope. They are so um, good. Do you like the ones filled with like, the beans or like the pork buns? Which one's your like favorite? Pork. I love pork. Oh man, I, I know. I, Carol, I'm never sorry. Never be in the nation of Islam. I, I like pork. pork. You like pork? You're, you're, you're such a bad Jew, Carol. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going on like rules of Judaism. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I I do the parts I consider important, which is hey, much less than other people. Didn't we just say we weren't gonna do a Dave Chappelle stand up comedy routine? And I think we, we just did it though. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't. Whatever. No, she, oh man. All right. Look, I I would just like to read a statement that I had prepared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really get to for real. No, oh, we, you you I'm guys gonna, can. I'm gonna yeah. be CNN's most hated list or something. Oh man. Um. <laughs> You Look, didn't I, say shit, and then you could continue not saying shit about it. So we had like the games. Who did? What was your pick for this vice president? Well, obviously, I'm going to go with one uh, future um, not Senator Herschel Walker. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Trump Walker, 2024. Tippy tie. What's it good? Trump. Dumb and Dumber three. <laughs> Here's the slogan. It's it's Trump Walker 2024. It's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's are that's, there real people saying that? That's courtesy of my Twitter feed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading your own Twitter. Uh, yeah, look pretty, pretty good on there. If I do say so myself, like I don't want to, you know, overly pat myself on the back. I don't want to suck my own dildo or anything, but. <laughs> um, is that how dildos work? I, I'm look. We're. I don't I'm not know. gonna kink shame. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I was in the Miss Nude Texas pageant. So, all right, googling that up real quick. <laughs> Miss Nude Texas. Uh, Ty Ross is. Were you under your real name? Oh um, uh, no, that wasn't my real name. Under God there. damn it. Um, all right. I'm trying to find it. What year was this? All right, I'm not really trying to find that. I'm I'm okay. Yeah, look, no. Try to tie Ross. Well, anyone out there trying to suck your own dildo, it uh yeah, I don't think that's how that works, guys. Or <laughs> or gals. I mean, maybe it is how it works. I don't know. Again, no one ever taught me these things. I'm I'm not familiar with my the... gown was amazing, I will say. All right. And when you keep teasing us, you'll have to like post the link in in the future. It was um, an internet in the nineties, or was it? Was there was there internet in the nineties? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, we had like dial up, you know, the thing with the like Wait for ah, picture ah, line by line. Ah, yeah. And, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Can't tell you how brutal that was, man. Do you know how incredible it, like how incredibly easy it is to just access porn in 2022 compared <laughs> to like dial up days? And like, oh, like the one picture, and it took like five minutes to get it. Anyway, <laughs> to get it, and, and then you're like, oh man, you don't have anything to save it to because like one picture would take up a whole disc. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is a tangent. Where I, I don't know what happened. I'm My sorry. costumes were amazing. I had like made one. It was like um, like the Carmen Miranda um, what what, what uh, I had a it was like um, you with the Chiquita uh, banana. Yes, thank you. Because I'm drunk, so yeah. Oh, that's but, what's wrong. And, <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. But yes, but I'm like, I damn, a, I want this Chinese. But I had the. Banana sleeves and the freaking skirt and everything it was awesome it was beautiful that i had made mm. and you sure you don't have pictures of this like i said it was the 90s we took pictures back then but um, yeah i guess it's not like we had just camera phones lying around in the 90s <laughs> no not in like 93 <laughs> right 93 but it, well it was very very proud of my um yeah we're we're disappointed that we missed out on this if only you had invited us um i was probably in middle school so i <laughs> would have been excited to see you um it, yeah let's not age ourselves anyway um do <laughs> do do either of you have any closing thoughts this evening you don't wow. have to. I was just no, saying. man. We did it. I'm like good to take a break from that this week. I I worked so I worked as hard as I could on getting the 
house we all did we all did our, what we could or what we were willing to do and it's yeah we now. fought to the Pat fucking bitter out. end you did it i'm gonna pat myself on them i'm literally yeah. patting myself on the back do you guys hear it yeah you Great. suck your own dildo carol um, <laughs> oh, yeah. on that yeah. one is that how that works yeah um, i think that sounds good okay ty do you have any closing thoughts <laughs> this is so bad oh, get off the fucking couch and vote get your asses out wait. there wait we did that already Oh. We don't have to do that again for two years, Ty. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rewind. Rewind. Wait. All right. Start up. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you have any closing uh, thoughts, Ty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mess. Put it down. <laughs> we fucking did it. Oh, Ty yeah. doesn't remember. Ty, good news, we won. <laughs> the Ty's like, I'm going back in time to vote for Democrats again just so we can get the house. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't vote in the house, you let me go back in time and vote. <laughs> oh my God. It's been a long week. I, I, I can attest. It's It's been rough. Yeah. All righty. Uh, all right. As for me, uh, my closing thoughts. Um, I just wanted to read a brief statement that I had prepared. Um, I denounce anti-Semitism in all its forms, and I stand with my friends in the Jewish community. And there's no joke after that. It's some real shit, y'all. Y'all, my peoples. I, I know we. I know we unfortunately haven't always gotten along, thanks to some bad actors out here stirring the pot. And, and creating bad vibes, but not real shit. Yeah. Like, I, you know, one day I hope to be, you know, considered honorary member of the Jewish community. Cause well, largely your food is amazing. So like, I want to be invited <laughs> to all the bar mitzvahs and so I can get the, the latkes and, and, and that wonderful braided bread of yours. And, and, and like, <laughs> 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 wonderful braided bread we'll be stronger together and, we'll, yeah. and when we talk so when you're talking about how white people don't season their food were you not including jews because here i was thinking our food is pretty good i like my food no, no. It's seasoning. i love chala uh, bread. but chala well, bread is is chala. on point well chala. don't don't jewish people only count as white people when you want to like isn't that one of like the prime benefits of being jewish That's, and i don't mean that is like some kind of i'm not trying to it's not Hello. i don't mean that in in like a negative way i'm like you know it's you're saying i'm passing easily yeah. <laughs> I, can, I don't i don't people you're don't passing know what I'm doing. Yeah. i'm not a hater i'm like Are you shit, passing right. as jewish carol no no right. no as white oh. saying, <laughs> saying i can i don't need to be people don't need to know i'm jewish she's saying yeah no oh. and i i approve that wholeheartedly like ride that shit Cause trust me, if, anyway. I could get, if I could get away with some good old white privilege as a black man in the South, I would do it. I would do it. I'm, I'm editing that out of the podcast for sure. No, um, yeah, but anyway. So yes, been... no more be no more being divided. Uh, <laughs> everyone should fucking we we need to all stand together. They they, they don't they want us separate. Yeah, cut this shit out too. No, <laughs> right. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, yeah, Kanye sucks. How about that? Um, Kanye sucks. <laughs> thank you for listening to this. Davidson's episode. dick. Okay. What? <laughs> Davidson's dick. <laughs> Good night, everybody. If you're still listening, thank it's you for listening. The insurrection. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of Part of the Insurrection. Uh, we hope you like yeah. and subscribe. Like grab a friend tell them to like and subscribe and tell them to grab a friend to like and subscribe and listen and download and uh, you know try and help us help us grow show us some support we don't know how long twitter will last so we won't have a way to get the word out if if it's not through through you uh, and i think that concludes this episode